Typically, in most ships, you'll have a captain, chief officer, second officer, and sometimes third officer. Well, in this ship here, being a research vessel, we have a lot of electronics, a GPS system. We have four GPSs on the ship. We have waypoints, where we want to go, where we've been, and what we want to accomplish as far as waypoints. And this is an electronic chart that you can expand, as you can see, Here's Florida, the Bahamas. This is a blown up chart of the area. They just came out with this a couple of years ago. It's a pretty neat tool, the AIS, Automated Information System. Um, it helps vessels communicate with one another. Like Vanna White, the magnetic compass. Um, still required on board all ships. Although, that being said, all ships will have a gyro compass, at least one, most two gyro compasses. Gyro compass will actually point to true north. Magnetic compass will point to magnetic north. And this is one of the gyros down here. And I'm not sure if you can see it, that's a gyro compass. Any equipment that's in the water that's plugged into our network, which is almost all of our science, I can monitor it if need be. When it's sunny out, you'll get sailing vessels that sometimes blend into the sea state. Or at night, especially around the Virgin Islands, down in the Caribbean, the Bahamas, um, some of the sailing vessels will run without nav lights because there's not much traffic. So you have to be, at night, be careful. The radar assists you in detecting vessels at night in restricted visibility as well as during the daytime. A lot of time we're cruising full speed, you know, just keeping an eye on items that may be adrift in the water. And... Band lab, bridge. Calling the van? Yeah, how are things looking down there for you? Uh, you'd like to uh, proceed a little more north or a little more to the east? How, how's it looking? All right, sounds real good, and uh, we'll proceed a little more to the north. We'll normally carry at least one other uh, vessel with us, if not two, and we can position those boats on board with the deck crane right here. On the aft of the ship, you'll see the A-frame, uh, that A-frame we utilize with launching and recover submersible submarines. The captain's office, which is a little messy right now. You probably don't want much. <laughs> it took a little bit of a hit. A um, little messy. And then this is my bunk in here, just a regular bunk. It's kind of messy. Because the other day, it's a little messy right now. And then if you'd like an answer, answers which require thought are two dollars. Correct answers are actually four dollars, but you will get dumb licks for free. <laughs> Teamwork is everyone does what I tell them to do and it just seems to run smoother that way. I don't know what it is. Overall cost to operate the ship um, on average is about twenty thousand dollars a day. We have a nice little machine shop in here to um, to fix equipment, make equipment, and just keep the ship up. Many of the bigger research ships will have a moon pool or Strauser Tower. And, well, the Strauser Tower is a tower that goes through the ship, right down through the hull, so we can communicate with underwater equipment, underwater subs, or in this case, the AUVs. We draw 12 feet of water, so the water is at this level. 
And if we draw 15 feet of water, it'll come up 18 feet of water. Well, unless the ship is sinking, it's not going to draw any more water. So the water level is only going to come up as high as the ship is low in the water. So we still have another eight feet and we're good. But if it gets up to this deck level, we've got issues. A lot of these hatches just need to be dogged properly, so normally you apply a little pressure, jam it up, and she's dogged down. A lot of dogs will be on the main deck of ships, water tight like this. If we do get a big wave, water um, won't go inside. This is a hatch for the engine room. We have two main propulsion engines, three generators, plus an emergency generator. We have water tanks on board. We have ballast tanks, fuel tanks, gray water tanks, sewage tanks, fresh water tanks. Um, and we make up to 2,000 gallons of water a day. Plus, we double filter it, so the water on the ship is pretty good. This area here is the cruise lounge. Typically, every ship uh, will have an area that is set up for watching movies, playing cards, Monopoly, relaxing. This is the galley department. Typically on a research, facility, research ship, you'll have a, about an average size galley for what it is. Chief's in here a real lot. I'm very seldom in here, but you can probably tell from the slimness. The galley crew in here. GB, Kim, galley crew. I say about an average size galley, but a little bigger than an average size galley in here. Uh, washer and dryer, we have the two washer and dryers just in case one goes down. We have birthing up on that deck level and birthing down below, below deck. And we have birthing on board this ship for 40 folks all together. Normally, the longest this vessel is typically at sea is 40 days. Yeah. An average trip is two and a half weeks before you're back to the dock. And that's pretty much pretty much a wrap on a research ship as far as the overall equipment and layouts of a research ship is. This is a typical research ship layout, give or take a, a few compartments and a few folks.